Well, since you ask, I'll tell you. The day I met him, it was all storm. He came to us through this community outreach thing we do to get apprentices. A little talent contest of sorts. Seriously, I'm not boasting. We really do lead the way in helping the... underprivileged. I remember how he trailed into my office for his interview. The rain had been so heavy that day that his clothes were pinned tightly to his body. It looked like he was wearing water. As soon as he came in, I gave him a towel and sat him on my chair. From that moment, I knew I liked him. Something about the quiet way he squeaked. Thank you, sir. Something about the way he would fold his legs like a napkin. Even something about how he shivered ceaselessly and his teeth clattered and clattered and clattered. <laughs> Either way, I said to myself on that storm-struck day, yes, this will work. And it did. I helped that boy more than he could have ever imagined. I was strict, yes, but he enjoyed it. As each week came to a close, he would call to me, Thank you for this opportunity, sir. I'll never take it for granted. <laughs> he moved like an ant. I would set him tasks, the crunching of numbers, the fetching of barista coffee, the dealing with persistent, forceful men, and within seconds, the numbers would be shredded. The coffee would be in my hand, and the men would be thrown into the abyss, never once returning to my door. <laughs> he was like an ant. Always working, working. I would never take credit for his sheer brilliance, not for the world. But my glare alone may well have helped. It drove him further. On one occasion, late in the night, I caught him in my office. With that signature squeak, he told me he was sorting files. I checked that, of course. But when I looked, there they were. All my files, sorted by date and then colour-coded, lined up like a little village of dominoes. Is it okay, sir? He asked me. And besides some glaring bureaucratic errors, it was. So I had to set challenges. It would be wrong of me to let him cruise through the year. That's no way to give the boy an education, experience. No, I had to weave a fine web of spider silk through which he could crawl and scrummage and scutter. And so every morning he would come to our headquarters at Caucasus Place and I would give him a coin, just a single coin. And I would say to him, take this and make me ten more by dusk. See, the problem was he did it every single day, working, working. So I made it harder. Ten became one hundred, became one thousand, became ten thousand. And when the day was done, I would count each coin and then drop them into the fire pit in my office. Count and burn. Count and burn. Heaven knows how he made so much each day. Perhaps he really was that good, but he knew just as well as I did that something unspeakably big rested on his completion of this task. Even if at the close of day all that was left of his efforts was some melted nickel clinging to a fire pit. I was always clear in my tasks. He knew it as well as I did. If he wanted to be good, he had to face the consequences. Which he did for some time. 20,000 became 30,000, became 40,000, became 50. He did what he had to do. And I would sit by the fire, counting 50,000 coins until the early hours of the morning. It went on. But 100,000 was simply too difficult for him. And so when he came to Caucasus Place, always honest, and he said, I'm sorry, sir, I just couldn't. I said, yes, I'm sorry too. And so I led him in, and we sat by the fire, and I did what I had to. For each coin he could not get, I kindly lent him one, heated it in the fire, and then pressed it firmly into his palm, where he could never forget it. And I stayed by the fire until all was done. Heat and press. Heat 
and press. And so I left him at Caucasus Place, and there he stayed. Fifty thousand coins pressed all over him like flies caught in a web. <laughs> Enough of this now, come. This vacancy is open for good reason. People will say lots of things, you know. If you want to succeed, you need to learn to take my word, not theirs. I'm a very respectable man, and I like you very much. Something about the way you say, please, yeah, proper etiquette. Something about your timid little smile. Come with me now to Caucasus Place. Your work can begin today. <laughs>